Okay, it's 601 and welcome everybody to our library building committee meeting. I'll call it to order. We got a lot of stuff to go through tonight, a lot of business. Um, and we have with us a uh, welcome to our town manager. And uh, let's see, all the usual sub, uh, suspects beyond that, <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so old business, we have minutes from September 4th. So moved. We have a move to approve by Mr. Ike, seconded by Mr. Berman. Comments, corrections from anyone? I just Patrick. want to say excellent job, Joe. I mean, the minutes are super, super detailed. So appreciate all that work. Thank you. Firearm. The judge said Bonds had $2 million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Marsha, your, your mic is on there. So, which it should be for voting. Okay, uh, no other comments? Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Thank you. All right, let's go to all our reports. Uh, number one is uh, Downs Construction. Anthony is here. Oh, Anthony, are you alone tonight? No, I got Johnny. Oh, Johnny's, Johnny's online. online. Johnny's online. Hi, Johnny. Okay. Uh, the standard, standard crew. Hi, everybody. Johnny just moved into a new apartment. Ooh. All right, let me share my screen here. Get going. Let me know if everybody can see this. We should be good to go. All right, let me zoom out a bit. We have our, our standard agenda here for the first item, uh, some general talking points. Um, today, uh, we started uh, to unwrap the brick for the mock-up. Um, and, you know, we noticed that the colors weren't based on the approved sample that we had the committee vote on uh, a few months prior as well as the submittal process, the manufacturer. I think, um, I don't know what happened, uh, but right now we did call the mock-up. I did see the brick that was on the ground and I decided not to put it up. It would have been a waste of everybody's time. Uh, we did send pictures over to TSKP, um, contacted the masonry contractors project manager. They're on, on, on the phone with the supplier to understand what happened with the discrepancies and the color variations that we have. Um, this has been vetted uh, a few months ago with this same brick that was used at a past project for TSKP over at Farmington High School. Uh, there was a few issues there. Um, we did contact Connecticut Mason right at that time. There was issues happening at Farmington High where we found out that this was the same brick that was going to be used here at Prosser. Uh, we put a whole uh, report and writing up together from Jeff with photo documentation of what was not acceptable at Farmington High. We contacted the vice president over at our masonry contractor, and he assured us that, you know, this this um, this same brick would not have the same issues at Farmington High. Well, before we get into this, it's 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 worse. Um, in my mind, I didn't want Connecticut Mason to waste any time putting it up. Uh, they did put their masonry accessories up and we do have our cast stone uh, underneath the windowsill, which looks great. Um, we started to, to put a couple bricks up. I, like I said, I stopped it. Um, so we're, we're dealing with that issue as we speak. Uh, we, we timed this out perfectly with procurement. Uh, the brick is in pallets. Uh, waiting to be delivered to the site in Pittsburgh at the manufacturers at the vendor's uh, yard. Uh, we said, don't even send it. We don't want it right now until you can figure out what's going on and, and why this happened. Uh, so we have a couple different routes that we could potentially take, uh, but we notified TSKP as soon as we saw this problem. Um, but right now I don't have any other further information than, you know, what I talked to concrete, or I should say masonry wise, you know, this afternoon. So that's in tomorrow morning, phone calls, conference calls, and we'll see where we're going, right? We still got a couple weeks anyways. We still got to do the AVB on all the elevations. We got to finish the sheathing, as you'll see in the, the processor update. Uh, but right now, we procurement-wise, we timed this perfectly. So if that brick came out like it should, it would have been, it would have been the perfect sequencing. It would have been timed absolutely perfect. So we're dealing with that. Um, we have maybe a couple different options here. Uh, working with TSKP, but right now all the lines are in the water 
um, at contacting the vendor through our masonry subcontractor. Um, yep, that was discovered this morning when we opened up the pallet of brick that to be to be used on the mock-up. Yep. Um, on a good note, con construction temporary lighting has been installed on the second level and the garage level areas. Uh, main level temp lighting will be installed and completed this week. As you can see, you drive through the, you know, at nighttime, the the, the top level and the, the garage level are lit up. All right. So we're going to complete that. Uh, Van Zelm, uh, just an update on Van Zelm. Everybody knows commissioning agent on this project, uh, mechanically, electrically, plumbing, and fire protection wise. Uh, they had a first site visit the other day, reviewed all the progress installations of the MEP systems. Uh, it was very good. It was kind of like a, a kickoff uh, walkthrough now that we have, you know, something to show out there. So I expect Van Zelm to be out there um, more frequently now that we're progressing with mechanical systems, electrical systems, and plumbing systems in the space. Um, going down the list, Prosser here, we continue with excavations on the Prosser site for gradings and elevations. Excavations also continue for the new utility work uh, outside Riley Lot. Manafort's been out there for a couple weeks now working on uh, utility uh, lines under the ground. We had a meeting with SLR this morning because there is a combination sewer line out there that we might be able to uh, save a little bit of money on with with the new work being installed. Uh, but we're waiting to uh, you know set forth with uh, with SLR and and what's going to be required of that. Uh, the concrete slab has been completed within the stairwell ramp and elevator area as well as the north stair in our electrical closet or electrical room. Uh, the concrete diamonds around the interior columns also have been completed with uh, filled in with concrete. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, we box around the structural steel columns. It's called the diamond. Um, that alleviates any cracking such if the building was to move. So it isolates that little bit of concrete from the main slab uh, to reduce, you know, any cracking that may happen you know, uh, to the slab. So it kind of limits that, you know, as the building settles and as the building, you know, obviously has... Um, some moment to it, which is swaying back and forth and whatnot. So that alleviates the concrete from cracking fully. Um, masonry block work is continuing at the lower level garage area and ramp area, as well as the, the elevator and stairwell shaft. As you can see, when we get to the picture section, we have our ground face CMU decorative block going up. It looks fantastic. It's very, uh, very nice looking in there. Uh, masonry air and vapor barriers to start at the end of this week. Now that the exterior sheathing has been completed on the west side, I should say, and the north elevation, we're moving our way around to the east and to the south. Uh, we have a couple steel items that need to be removed on the south side to get it out of the way to complete framing. Once that's done, we'll, we'll hit the sheathing and then air and vapor barrier behind that. Uh, the remaining roof work at the mechanical area and low roof has started. Continuing with that, they should be finished up fairly soon. Exterior cold formed metal framing is also almost complete around the entire building. A small area of the parapet roof on the east elevation remains open as well as the south side. And we're currently completing that at this time. Exterior sheathing board, as you could see, the white board on the exterior of the building has been going up and around. Uh, we have a little bit on the parapet on the east as well as the south, but the majority of it on that west elevation and the north elevation uh, has been completed. Interior walls have been laid out and framing has interior framing has started on the second level and the main level. With the framing being installed, we're allowed, it's allowing us to install the interior hollow, hollow metal door frames uh, for partitions for all the rooms within the building. As you can see down below, once we get to the picture section, you'll see what I'm talking about. With this being said, we're also able to start in-wall plumbing for the bathrooms. Now that that wall has been framed, we could set the carriers, uh, the frames of the carriers, all, all of the, the waste and vent plumbing through those walls. Um, going down, MEP hangers and support hangers have been laid out and continuing to be installed on all floors with focus in the garage area. We want those MEP hangers and all that stuff laid out prior to spray fireproofing. If you walk the job and you guys come out there and you take a look, that whole garage level is bare steel. It's bare steel because it's going to get applied sprayed on fireproofing. All right. 
Um, going down the list here, fire protection, we have the main trunk lines of the pipes and select branch lines starting to be installed on the second level with our, our sprinkler company. Uh, plumbing drainage lines are also continuing on the second level on the first floor. All temp roof drains have been installed. Mechanical piping is also currently being installed on the second level. That's the copper piping uh, for the domestic water and mechanical piping, as you can see up there. Um, hopefully I got a good picture of it. Uh, duct work has started, um, obviously, on the second level. It's continuing. First level duct work has been delivered and is being installed as well. Uh, there's a lot of big, big duct work on this project that they're lifting and putting in place. So far, so good. We haven't seen one piece of scrap duct be put in a dumpster yet. So that means everything is fit and pretty good. Knock on wood. Um, VAVs are also being installed and connected to those ductwork duct lines that we have installed. And for you, uh, for people that don't know what a VAV is, it basically it varies the airflow and to a varying temperature and speed uh, throughout the ductwork. Um, so that allows for um, general speed of air and, and you know a constant temperature or a change in temperature if needed. Electrical conduit runs continue to be installed on all levels. Uh, we have the permanent permanent power panels coming this week, as well as the new um, vault uh, being being dropped off and delivered to the site. Uh, we do have some work, as you'll see in the COP section. I might have forgotten and put it on there, but I'll, I'll take a look and, and, and talk about it when we get to that point. Uh, it's based on an Eversource sketch that we recently got from them where we're tying in and pulling power from the road. All right. Anybody have any questions uh, in regards to Prosser? There's a lot of action, a lot of stuff happening out there at this time, multiple, multiple levels, multiple areas, multiple trades, you know, doing a, a lot of different things out there. Questions for Anthony? I can't see hands other than in the room here. Aaron, and we got Lois. Lois, why don't you go ahead? Mm, it could be a problem. <laughs> it could be a problem. In, in I'm terms sorry, of we can't hear Lois's question. We couldn't hear Lois, and I didn't hear Patrick earlier either. Um, I didn't have my mic on. Question is, is how large a problem Will the brick thing be, and it will? Could it be a time problem or other times as well? Thank you, sir. It could. It could be a schedule issue, right? Um, it's not going to affect what we're doing on the inside of the building. Obviously, it will only affect the outside. Um, when we're building the interior of the building in our scopes of work um, for a general trades contractor, we own temporary protection of any openings, windows, elevations with poly wood, and that will suffice for. The building department for their inspections and permits to allow us to keep moving. Um, what this will run into is installing now masonry in the winter time. You have winter conditions, you have to keep the brick at a certain temperature. Now with the scaffolding on the exterior of the building, you're going to need to tent over, produce heat, keep it warm enough where it could be installed. Um, other than that... Anthony, Anthony, yeah, Anthony go, do you think the, the AVB that you're putting on uh, well, is uh, UV rated? Do you think that'll be okay through the winter? Yeah, I think that should be fine. We definitely did. Even the sheathing, we asked, you know, what the shelf life is being exposed to UV rays. We got a we got a year. If it was ever to take that long, so I think we're well in that 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 realm of of getting it complete before that expires. Um, so in order in order to help you expedite, uh, I know Taisu had uh, put at my desk after our conference call, a, a sample that I took a photo and I sent it to you. So mm -hmm. um, if there's any way to expedite that, even by getting a different consistent color brick, we're willing to look at it. So, yep. and, um, and that's a conversation I had with the project manager from Connecticut Mason today. Um, right. I forwarded those pictures. So he's on it. He's going to work with the manufacturer. They they owe a bunch of favors to Connecticut Mason, who's one of the largest masonry contractors in the state of the Connecticut. So the, that factory owns a couple favors to them at this point in time. So hopefully we could get that. If a new brick gets selected, uh, hopefully they'll run it through the, the processes and get it manufactured up right away. Good loss. I had two other things. They may come up later in the conversation. One has to do with where the MDC water line is. Yep. Could talk about that for later. And the other is the striations on the wood. Uh, apparently at the 
at the nth of ceiling level. And again, we can deal with that later. I just don't know yep. when in the conversation. That well, we happens. so when that happens, so the wood, for instance, we have a solvent from the, the manufacturer who produced the wood, and there's a Benjamin Moore stain on it. We could get the solvent, see if it wipes off. But, you know, if it doesn't, the worst case scenario would have to be a, a sand and a, and a refinish at this point in time. So when these were being installed, right, Jeff and TSKP have uh, had other past projects where they kept these wrapped. Um, South County, who's um, one of the largest firms that produces these glue lamp beams in Rhode Island, uh, where this came from, was to not leave them wrapped per their recommendation. And the reason for that is it delaminates, it buckles, it cre creates mold, because no matter how much you perforate the plastic wrap around it, there's condensation that builds up and dri drips and keeps, you know, keeps within that plastic. I remember the conversation. So, the difference. so right hey, Lola, now. Hey, yeah, yeah, ahead, can Jeff. I just say something? Uh, yeah. to, uh, Lois, Anthony did assure me that, because uh, I, I was very concerned with that wood being erected without protection during the rain and stuff. And Anthony assured me that they had sealed all the glue lambs with a sealer yeah on top of that Benjamin Moore stain so that it could take anything. So it looked like it was holding up. I think what happened was when the roof deck started going on, primarily where the overlaps and the seams are, the uh, metal fasteners, the screws, uh, went through the deck into the wood. Uh, when it did rain, it sort of weeped through that. And that's why you're getting the streaks. Those are lined with every fastener. So in the past, what we've done is we've had the wrap on it, but I've asked the, the contractor to slice the bottom so that the tails are still flapping so it can breathe. And then, um, you know, they cut them off after the fact. Um, but in this case, this subcontractor assured us that they sealed them and that they preferred not leaving any of that protection on because of, like Anthony said, condensation, mold, et cetera. So, there's a point we have to listen to them and let them go. My only hesitation on sanding is that we have to be extremely careful with even entertaining that idea. So my suggestion would be to get a ladder up there and start cleaning an area now just to test it so we know what's going to be necessary going in so that we don't get all the finishes and everything going and then we have an issue. So it might be best just to test an area with just some... Uh, you know, cleaning you know, soap and water, dishwash soap and water to see if it comes off. And if that does, then then we're clear. And then, but I think the so sooner than later, if we can get those clean, I think it would be better because the longer it sits on there, the longer it's it's not going to be easy to take off. Absolutely, absolutely. I thought you had tried cleaning. So, so because what? this is not. Uh, this was brought to everybody's <clears throat> attention with uh, Jeff's field report, but at the. Um, the other week, um, weekly, bi-weekly owner meetings, this came up, <clears throat> say, more than two months ago. You know, oh, it's, so it's, not, it's not a new issue, but it's a genuine one. Right. Um, we were I thought you had tried cleaning already. Not yet. We want to use the solvent that they have. So they used a Benjamin Moore product on there, and Benjamin Moore makes a product for this type of finish that's a little bit more... Um, stringent a little bit more uh, chemical property to it um, so we're going to try that if that doesn't work i think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a sand and a refinish in a, in a, and can uh, we can we spot. get up can we do it anthony can we do a test area sooner than later yeah absolutely even, we'll if, get it's on on the, even if it's on the second floor just get a tall ladder if you want me there you know yep. we'll start with like three different levels we'll go we'll go uh dish soap or, or soap and water and then we'll hit that. So I'm just concerned about the solvent because the solvent can start to take the patina off. And once we do that, we're going to have blotches. And then here we go. You're going to have to be sanding everything. Nobody wants the dust and sanding and refinishing. I don't even think you guys want that. No. So the sooner we address it, the better, I think. Right. And, th and that leads me to, you know, let's say worst case scenario, we do have to sand and refinish. We don't want any other finishes within the space, right? Because, you know, you're going to have to get up there. You're going to cr create a little bit of dust. And we want everything out of the way. So yes, the sooner the better. We'll uh, I'll get it. I'll get our guy on it. Uh, we'll have him wipe it. I'll take a picture of it, send it to you, and then um, we'll see what happens with that. Um, hopefully, we'll just call, call call me. Call me. I'll come out. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, let, let's please find a cleaning method. Yeah, of course.
Righty. Um, other questions for Anthony so far? Patrick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just Anthony, I'll need help with this, but talking about the electrical way back when um, <laughs> we were supposed to order some kind of um, box. I don't, for lack of a better word, I don't remember exactly what it was called. Switch gear. Switch gear. That's it. Thank you. I knew you knew it. I knew you knew it. Um, so what, what about that switch gear? Do we have it? It's a gone. It's out of the project. Oh, it's out of the project. We're not going to have any permanent power on here. We're going to have candlelight. <laughs> no, um, this switch gear was removed from the design phase when we were bidding the job to go do a panelized system to alleviate that long lead time of 70 right. something weeks for it. So all those permanent power panels yeah. are at our electricals yeah. uh, subcontractor shop. Okay. So we're just waiting on to get that room finished on there. Okay. A wall built before that permanent power and all those panels start coming in. And then Eversource has designed a sketch where we need to tap in for permanent service out of the road, not that transformer that's on on, on the site. We have mm -hmm. to go into the road. Um, so Eversource provided us a sketch. Um, we got that over to the design team as fast as we could. They produced a PR. So now we have our subcontractors taking a look at it for pricing accordingly, because that's one of those items that will affect the permanent power turning on in the building. And we want to get this done in about a month. Okay. And the reason for that is right now we're running all our temporary power off a generator through our, um, temporary electrical company because of that, because we were supposed to originally tap into that transformer that's on the site yeah ever source you can't do that oh. so now we have to go to the road okay. that's how we were going to feed the building temporary power but we can so and that generator is gas runs on gas runs on diesel fuel it diesel but i'll fill it up once a week okay oh. there's not a huge load on it right now so it lasts a little bit longer um, you leave, but the lights stay on all night, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah those, those lights don't really oh, okay. draw too, too much energy, too much power. Okay. Lois hit my other questions. <laughs> Mr. Berman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anthony, I presume the diesel fuel is cheaper than the, everyone would have to pay electrical. Um, well, the reason why is we can't tap in to get our temporary power off that transformer like we thought we would use. Uh, we looked with Eversource to using a power pole here on uh, Mountain Ave, but it's 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 high voltage. You would need to have Eversource put a transformer on the on the line to to get it to dumb down to to produce the building. So with that being said, um, when Nancy was was here, we had Eversource looking in the road for I don't even know how long, probably a good six weeks here to try and see where the power was actually coming into the building, and it was within the road, not that transformer. So that's kind of what, what led us to believe that, you know, we need to get emergency lighting on. We need to get this building lit. We need to use a generator to, to get the trades power until we get the permanent power into the building. Yeah, no, my question was, you know, I, I, I know what at resources char, charges for per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. I presume the diesel is going to be cheaper than mm, uh, or, it, or uh, roughly the same. No, because once we get the permanent power, Obviously, we have in, in our GMP, we have utility uh, right. allowance that all that, that that money would come from for that Eversource bill, right? But right now, we have to use this generator, right? But at the end of the day, fuel is going to be more expensive because it, 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 it sucks it up more than, you know, the kilowatts from coming from Eversource, really. So right now, to facilitate any type of additional cost to the job because of this Eversource situation... I am running this temporary generator through our temporary electrical bid package that has about $40,000 worth of allowance money to subsidize the cost for that, that temporary generator. It's expensive every month. It's, it's pretty expensive to run. So that's why we want to get this permanent power pulled in from the road into the building with the power panels in, and then we're going to tap into our, you know, our service that way. Um, but that also goes for like utilities for for gas because we're going to have temporary heat coming up here in, in about a couple months. Uh, we have we used water. So I guess the first water bill was sent to Glenn over at the DPW and Glenn forwarded it to me. I said, Glenn, we have money for utilities in our project to pay for this address, which is Prosser. So we were taking care of that through that GMP allowance that we have established. 
All righty. Other questions for Anthony? Clark? Use your microphone so everybody can hear you, please. What's the schedule for uh, masonry uh, before the problem with the brick showed up? The duration of masonry or when it was supposed to start? It's supposed to start next week. Duration? Um, I can't remember. It was 25 or 30 days. Five or six weeks. Yep. Yep, no problem. Other questions for Anthony? Sharon, any uh, any hands up? No hands. Okay, you may continue. Thank you. All right, on to the Riley site. Uh, we're continuing to, to use it as a laydown area for all trades. Again, stockpiled soil is 100% removed from the site. It's gone to Windsor facility. The bridge abutment, the first one, has been uh, poured. Uh, we're working on the other bridge abutment uh, to form it rebar and then pour concrete. Uh, we're hoping to land the new pedestrian bridge sometime at the end of October. Um, but right now, everybody's focus is on the COP25, which is the Riley lot subgrade. All right, and we'll get into those details once we get to the next section of the agenda. All righty, but there's really not much else to talk about for Riley. Um, we got the bridge work going on. Um, hopefully we could we could pass COP25 when I talk about it later um, to get that work going because uh, there is quite a bit of work that Manafort's got to do to uh, bring that up to a suitable subgrade for the parking lot. Later is now. Let's go. Later is oh. now. Let's go on down. Sorry, a lot of hot air today. Uh, Section B, requisitions and change order proposals. September 2024 requisition is currently being assembled. We will formally submit it in two weeks at the next committee meeting. Budget pending COPs. I'm still having a plug number show of $30,000, $31,000 for any further impacted soils from utility work that's going on. Uh, the utility work that's basically remains is the gas lines and electrical lines coming down off of uh, uh, Tungsis Avenue, um, coming down to the north end of the building. Uh, Manafort has, has done the, the west elevation and so on and so forth. On a good note, the material once it leaves Riley, that is on Riley currently, is clean. Okay. Um, we do have COP33 uh, DOT paving requirements. I have a $60,000 budget in there. I got to do some homework mm -hmm. with SLR, uh, Richter Segan, and the DOT of what they're requiring for, for repaving, or I should say milling and repaving of uh, utility work within the road. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge. I know the DOT was out there uh, a couple uh, last week. Uh, they reduced the scope a little bit. Originally, this change order was, uh, I was showing about $81,000 budget, uh, but the scope has been slightly reduced uh, by them. COP34, I'm, I'm tracking uh, to be determined, which is the plaza entrance modification due to the MDC water main uh, that's over there. TSKP has been working diligently with their um, consultants to redesign this plaza area. I believe, uh, Jeff, I don't know if you're going to be reviewing that tonight or not, um, of, of what you kind of yes. did, behind, what you did yes. behind the scenes. Uh, so once that comes, we'll start formulating pricing for that. Um, official COPs, uh, like I would like to get approved for uh, the committee tonight. I'll start with the big one first. Uh, COP25 is the Riley lot subgrade improvements based on the wealthy report back in July. This is for area one and two. We have applied as many allowances as we could possibly put in there to limit the cost exposure to the project. Uh, but we have an end result cost of $339,207 to provide um, so what the, the scope of work is, they originally owned 13 inches down uh, to the subgrade to a, for, the, for the heavy duty parking lot based on Max Wealthy's findings, uh, based on water levels out there, based on the, the additional work that we did at the bridge abutment for with flowable fill, uh, that we would need to come down probably an additional 24 inches under that base contract, 13 inches, uh, removal of that material and bring in uh, stone and fabric to get to the structural integrity that the parking lot needs. 
Uh, so everything is included in that cost. And right now I'm looking for approval uh, to release Manafort on this uh, subgrade work of $339,207. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ike. Second. Second by Mr. Berman. Discussion. Mr. Berman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, does this 339000 include uh, moving the soil off the property and sending it somewhere? Correct. Yep, that's removing it as clean, which we had it tested from GeoQuest, and it's going to be removed. That includes trucking the material out of here as clean. Thank you. Mark. What was the previous budget amount you were carrying for this? this uh, work? It was, well, there was, it was broken out into two separate ones because uh, we were trying to um, have the town, the town of Bloomfield see maybe we could do one section of the lot um, in comparison with the other and, and what the, you know, warranty process would potentially be, what would require of repair uh, of the, the section of the lot that was broken into two, um, you know, throughout the course of, you know, 20 years, you know, how much repair would you be doing and settling because of that um, so what I did here was instead of having COP 25A, which I believe was like $58,000 and COP uh, 25B, which I could recall was I think around 280 something thousand dollars. So we're, we're pretty much right on uh, where we need to be. We, we had Manafort adjust the numbers um, where we could. Um, a lot of it's material, um, again, a lot of trucking. Uh, so we we did try to try to do our due diligence here and try to save as much money as we can and apply as many allowances that are established in our GMP to to kind of alleviate uh, the full magnitude of this uh, of this issue. And how was the number vetted out? Um, it was vetted out for labor hours. Uh, we reduced, you know, some trucking time, uh, operator time, um, teamster time um, by a little bit. So it was vetted out by. Your people. It was vetted people. out by Downs. It was vetted out by Max Welty, who this uh, the, the geotechnical engineer, and and TSKP. So all these, Clark, when I bring them to the table for the committee, have gone through the the consultant, have gone through us, uh, TSKP, and their consultants. None of these change orders that we bring up to the table here at the committee level, are just coming from Downs without any any other uh, interpretation, any other eyes and visuals. On the change order, uh, you've said that consistently right along, so I'm not surprised. I just did anybody did anybody? How is there a way to uh, check the uh, the quantities as far as if they were correct and accurate? Um, it, it's going to be tough, but the topography out there, there's some lower points, some higher points. So it was, it's all based on it's all based on an average, really, for material leaving the site. But did anyone check that average against? You know, did someone do a ballpark to check that? Yeah, Ma Max Wealthy. He yep. checked the quantities. Check the quantities, the labor hours, the material, all that. Great, thank you. Um, the disappointing part of this is that we didn't know the extent right. of these rotten soils underneath our new parking lot. Um, and that's why we try to break it out into two sections. Maybe we could get away with not having to do the full scope of work. But well, I, well, I appreciate you presenting the options, but I, you know, uh, at the owners' meetings, we we talked about. There's only one way to do this, and that's the right way to have a 20-year parking lot. We don't want a parking lot that's going to be crumbling and moving and settling, and you know it has to be, it has to be done right. It's a town town facility, um, and and just you know, I just want to say to everybody that had we known we had these conditions, uh, well, we'd still be spending this money. That's the, the, that's the sad part. You know, we just didn't know. Uh, so it's a bit of a surprise, uh, but it was coming whether we knew it or not. Um, so we, a lesson learned maybe for our um, civil engineers to call for more borings in parking areas. You know, I know they do a lot of borings for structural work or foundations. Um, there was There was a boring in the parking lot, you know, that showed this, but there was not a lot of borings taken in the parking area. And I think that's more typical to save, save some investigation monies. Um, but nobody knew, nobody knew, right. but we, we own it. And the right thing to do is, is to remove it. 
and, and another blessing is too that the material's clean. Thank goodness, right? Because that's a lot of lot yeah. Of we don't right. On. We don't have to worry about uh, disposal of contaminated materials. Um, uh, Joe. You were saying you mitigated the cost from the last time when you had it broken out into two different ones? Yeah, we try to reduce the, the amount of labor hours as much as last possible. Last time you had the first section due for 58364 and the second one for 284581 which comes to 332 and change, and this one's 330. And then those, I don't believe those had our overhead and profit markup in that. That's why. Thanks for the clarification. Yep, no problem. Other discussion? Lois? I'm sorry, Lois. We we can't hear you. But close to you. This this um, relates to should we have bought it in the beginning? Um, it goes all the way back to a lot of the problems that we've had are based on where we decided to put the library. Um, so it's it's nobody's fault, but I think the point about making sure that you know what you're doing at the very beginning is an important one. And, and that comes back to the plaza. How could we not have known where the water main was? Well, we'll be talking about that. I think we skipped it. No, uh, well, I know that um, Jeff's got the- uh, Jeff's got a, a okay. presentation on, on that, but- But I agree with you completely. We, somebody could have said, this is clearly a difficult spot that's been flooded over the centuries. Why don't we really look and see what's there? Well, Lois, you and I will take this to the next building committee. That yeah, we will. Right. <laughs> the next <laughs> knowledge, the next right? building we build right. <laughs> together. Right. Thank you. I think we, we also have to remember there was a building on that side as well. Took up a lot of the area. No. Some. Some. Um, I think it we have hands up, Sharon. Anybody? I just hate being the bearer about <laughs> I hate All right, so um, so we have a motion to approve change order proposal number 25, okay. uh, and Patrick has I just had one. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. About you. That's okay. Real quick. Real quick, Anthony. So, you know, the materials that'll be removed, the dirt and stuff, you, it's an estimate, right? Uh, you, you know well, how much- square footage of the knows. parking lot and how deep they got to dig. Okay, so I'm just wondering, I mean, if it comes up to be something different than what we said it was. Uh, well, so not... if it comes up to be more, we're yeah. of course locked in for this price. Right, that's, you know, okay. if it comes in less by a little bit, they, you know. Yeah, okay. No, I just want it's to a lump sum. It's a lump sum, right. right. It's not a Madonna. So they could, to be honest with you, they could take on risk too, right? You know, okay. at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that was it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All right. All in favor of approving change order proposal number 25 in the amount of $339,207. Please say aye. 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 Any nays? Anybody abstaining? We are unanimous. Okay. Next. Okay, on to the next one. Well, it gets easier, right? Uh, a little bit easier. Bloomfield landfill, zero cost. Uh, all that impacted soil, it ended up to be 7,700 tons of material leaving the site uh, that went to Windsor. Uh, we had some a little bit of additional cost from Manafort to provide some supervision, um, some a little in additional trucking as compared to the DMR. Uh, if this was clean, uh, but we have applied uh, GMP allowances and some contract allowances through Manafort, and this is a net zero cost to the project. I'm just looking for approval on that just so I could start mm -hmm. change orders. Second. We have a motion to approve by Mr. Ike, second by Jesse. Thank you very much. Discussion? No hands. Okay. All in favor of change order proposal number three. Third. Third. Over Number 30, days. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. In the uh, net amount of zero. Aye. 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 Nays? Anybody abstaining? Okay, we are unanimous. Lois, thank you again for that. <laughs> All right, the last one here is our wonderful friends at the MDC. 
uh, requirement from them. They've been on site quite a bit recently. Uh, this was a requirement uh, for their parameters to install a fire meter pit on the site. Uh, this was a cost through Manafort for excavations, the actual uh, fire meter box, uh, lines, valves, all that good stuff. Um, in the amount of $62,169 uh, due to the MDC. We had a few OAC meetings uh, in discussion about this. If we could uh, make the box size, the fire meter pit smaller, if it was an actual necessity and MDC was not budging one bit on any of it. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ike. Second. Second from Mr. Berman, thank you. Questions, discussion? I think you prepared us well for this one in the past. Uh, all in favor of approving change order proposal number 31 on the amount of $62,169, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Anybody abstaining? We are unanimous again. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, one question on the uh, change order proposal pending number 29 on impacted soils. Uh, is there opportunity there to uh, bring those to the Windsor Bloomfield landfill? Um, so Do we know or not? Right. Know? So right now, right, we um, we did a lot of this utility work as that process was happening. So we some of it already some is. of it already is there. But there will be more. There might be a little bit more coming from the hill on the north side with the the gas and the 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 um, electrical lines going into the building. And do we know whether we can bring it? To I have no idea yet. Again, that's why we're we're using a thirty thousand dollar budget as if we were to have this to go to um, clean earth or correct okay. correct. Yep. Okay. So but again, if if we don't and. And we could even have GeoQuest maybe test this and maybe you're a little bit different on that, that hill over there. Maybe this, you know, doesn't even you know pose an we issue. We don't know what it is yet or so, how much right, so or where it's going. So potentially right now this thirty thousand dollars could be zero, which would be nice. So and, and I just wanted to put the caveat out there before I get to the, the the picture section of my agenda is we had a budget meeting with everybody yesterday. And with these these two big, huge um, change orders, you know, we still have around seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in owners contingency remaining for the duration of the project, on top of our CM contingency, which is about eight hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. Okay, I, we'll get an update on that at our next meeting. Yep. Thank you. Pictures. Pictures. All righty. Last stretch here. Let me know if everybody could see this. I'll zoom in. Johnny, fantastic job on the pictures as always. Uh, this is the south elevation in its entirety. Uh, Johnny put together where we're looking at on the building on the drawings. And then to the left is actually what we have installed in the field to date. It's not a peaked roof. That's the temporary stair. That is the temporary stair, yes. All righty, going down. Let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, this is the Friends of the Library store. As you can see, the slab um, and the walls of the foundation are all around it. To the right-hand side, we have about 15 feet of structural fill, uh, bringing that, that hole all the way up to the slab on grade is what you see out there today. On top of that, you see the ceiling is a 10-inch uh, suspended concrete slab with rebar, mesh, and, and all sorts of uh, uh, structural items within that slab to keep it uh, structurally supported freestanding basically on all walls. Going down the list here, uh, I want to show you that this is the ground face CMU block that we talked about. It has architectural features to it. Sorry, I zoom in and gets a little bit pixelated, uh, but there's like little black chips, white chips in it, um, but it's a very, very nice product. That grout isn't going to be as dark as it is. it's shown there. It's going to dry out, but it's going to be a nice, a nice feature of the, the stairwells in the building. Um, as you can see, I called it, it's a ground face. It's a decorative, decorative CMU. Uh, it's a masonry block. Going down the list here, this is our fire sprinkler room in our main electrical. Where you see that rebar going across is where a CMU wall is going to be built uh, with a door, as you can see right here in the, the floor plan. 
um, to get back to the main electrical room. That is where all our uh, permanent power panels are gonna go uh, that are ready to be installed. Um, so it was nice to get this pour done. Uh, as you can see, we have all the stub ups for the electrical conduit to feed the transformers and panels within this area. Uh, on the back side, you can't see it, but we do have a, the, the sprinkler uh, pipe in there for the main. Going down the list, we have interior wall layout and framing being installed on the main level. Uh, we have ductwork up in certain sections. We have uh, framing going in and taking place, which is great to see. Uh, going down the list, we have some more interior wall layout and framing being installed at the main level. You can see in the back corner there, you have a little uh, hollow metal door frame uh, installed. Going down the list here, we have more interior walls and framing being installed. This is a, a little bit more in depth because it, we are um, at the second level. Uh, we're working our, 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 the way top down in the building uh, based on our schedule. As you can see there, there are a bunch of little office spaces with uh, the hollow metal frame and light uh, installed um, along that west elevation. And then we have a shot of the roof installation looking north in that upper left corner uh, is the review is the view of the the exterior uh, mechanical space open air. It's like Prosser Lake to me. Prosser Lake. <laughs> and that's really that's it. All right. Thank you for that uh, thorough update. Final questions for Anthony. Anybody? Or Johnny. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Let's go to our other project manager, Glenn on McMahon. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, I apologize for my attire this evening. Uh, my first grader made it to week three of school before getting sick, but uh, he took out the whole family, unfortunately. So I uh, was homesick today, but made it a productive of day. Um, Joe, thank you for your patience and me uh, piecemealing all these invoices and proposals to you throughout the course of the day. Uh, why don't we just jump right into the renovation cost tracker. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay. So I just want to take a peek at the budget real quick. Let me get this out of my way. Um, all right. Can everyone see that? Yes, we're good. Yeah. Yep. All right. So I have good news. Our McMahon renovation is well under budget at this time. Um, so the second column in under estimate, all the cells that you see in the rows uh, highlighted in yellow um, are either a placeholder or yet to get final pricing. Um, all the other jobs have uh, been identified and awarded at this time. Um, if we go down the list, I have that placeholder for abatement right now for $50,000. Um, that placeholder is for the children's storefront wall and also the associated abatement work for the staff room window installation. Going down the list, um, Anderson Electric, their bid... Uh, proposal had come in. We'll talk about that um, at the end of this presentation. Um, essentially, all these items are tasks for the electrical jobs, everything from the electrical upgrades, IT wiring, EV charger, on down through the list. Um, the good news is I had an initial estimate of $348,000. Anderson Electric came in at three forty-six, dollars which was right on the money. Um, that's excellent news for the cost of the project. Um, minor, minor things that we still have to price out, interior door slabs. There's two maple interior door slabs in the construction. And the main entrance canopy, we had a placeholder of $50,000. I know we were presented with an initial rendering. Um, and we're also entertaining the idea of installing uh, a canopy on either side, east and west entrances. Um, so we'll need to see where um, that cost, uh, what, what design we're going to agree on and where that cost is going to go from there. But that's what we have for an initial placeholder. The children's reading garden, 
um, that landscape portion, which we will not be able to establish until spring, had um, a $13,000 placeholder. I'd like to firm up the landscaping and, and really kind of improve the overall aesthetic, but we'll see where our numbers lie for the rest of the projects. Um, so right now we've got um, kind of this hanging chad for a $100,000 placeholder. This is end user technology. Um, the whole technical um, package has to be firmed up. So that scope of work will be coming from library staff. Um, Chris Silowak is spearheading a final technology uh, end user list for all requirements, um, everything from sound systems to upgraded network switches. Um, so that should be coming to us in another week. Overall, though, I'm happy to say that we were currently under budget by $227,000. Um, on top of that, we have the $100,000 contingency, and I'm also following up on a rebate from Eversource in the amount of $22,500 for the installation of that high-efficiency heat pump rooftop unit. Um, initially, they had a $1,500 per one ton of pooling rebate. We installed a 15,000-ton unit, therefore we're due um, $22,500. Um, if you add all of these totals up, uh, we have about $350,000 in contingency monies for this project. So overall, our budget is very healthy. Uh, like I said, I want to firm up the numbers on the technology portion, and um, we'll see where that window installation in the staff room brings us for the abatement contingency amount. I have a brief PowerPoint presentation. Uh, we have some updates to share with you. Um, so the first slide here in my uh, PowerPoint deck, this, these are rooms 103, 4, 5, and 6. So this is the ADA restroom renovation that Millennium Builders is working on. As you can see, the demolition has been completed. Uh, the metal stud framing is all in place. Um, so if you look to the right, this little detail from the floor plan, uh, the new janitor's closet, the men's and women's restrooms, the new plumbing chase, um, and the storage room have all been framed out. The plumber was on site last week, and I believe we're due for the plumbing inspection tomorrow between 10 and 12. Um, so I don't foresee any issues with that. Um, I did have a couple change orders that came up with this particular section of remodeling. I haven't received those numbers yet for the change order proposals. Um, one is for the installation of a backflow uh, prevention device. So right now um, in the janitor's closet, we have the domestic water inlet. Um, uh, we never had a backflow preventer on that um, domestic water inlet. And MDC is gonna require one for sure. So we need to install a backflow preventer. And also we currently have a backflow on the irrigation um, water supply. Uh, it's outside, it's actually in a service valve box underground and it should really be relocated inside just for freeze protection. Um, if you can't clear all the water out of your irrigation lines, we could potentially damage that backflow. So while we're installing one on the domestic line, I also want to relocate um, the irrigation backflow preventer. Other than that, the only minor change order was adding, and if you follow my cursor over here, on the outside of the storage room, we have a little convenience door, um, not deemed emergency egress, uh, but per building code, we're going to require illumination on the exterior of the building. So I've got one small LED wall pack that needs to be installed. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, this is off the east entrance going towards Blue Hills Avenue. This was the old sidewalk being torn out. On the right hand side, you had that um, island, um, which was just overgrown vegetation. I had Public Works pull that out along with the curbing. And on the left hand side, you had a little notch out here for an overgrown arborvitae that we decided to pull and extend the sidewalk, just square it off with the building, um, just to increase the, uh, the egress from the building. 
uh, it was kind of blocking off our pathway for those double sliding doors. Um, so you can see Sasaya Construction completed the pour of the new sidewalk last week. On the right hand side, um, just in front of this drain close to Blue Hills Avenue is where that old island used to be. It really cleaned up the front aesthetics of the library. Uh, just a lot cleaner look overall. Uh, really happy with their work. Sasea does excellent work. And uh, like I said, it really opens up the front of this building now for uh, the patio tables uh, out front and maybe some sculpture work, any anything that we want to add. So it's nice to have this new walkway. Um, in the staff room or staff lounge, we had to move the rough in piping. So the committee approved the uh, proposal from Boivere Plumbing at our last meeting to re-rough the plumbing, the drainage and hot and cold water lines. It had to be 75 inches off the wall to accommodate the new millwork that's coming in through Red Thread. So uh, Boivere completed that uh, last week. I will have a mason come in and kind of uh, face off um, where they had to demo. They had to knock out about four or five blocks uh, in the CMU. So I'll have that all repointed by a mason. Hey, Glenn, can you back go back one slide? Sorry, quick. Sure, no problem. You know, those pipes, is that that's an exterior wall, correct? This is interior. Oh, it's interior. Okay. Sorry. Yep. No worries. Interior wall. Um, and then my second to last slide is for the alternate window that was proposed in the staff lounge. Um, so Jeff and I had played around with measurements. Um, ultimately, we landed on a three by five foot picture window. Um, so I met with a mason, uh, John Filaramo, this week. I'm waiting for their proposal on the cost to come up with a 40 by 60 inch rough opening in preparation for the glazier to come in and install that picture window. I did forewarn the mason that there is blown in vermiculite and that abatement will be required. Um, fortunately for us, they do have a subcontractor in mind that they work with. So as mentioned, I should have those numbers next week. But we just felt like the three by five was, um, was just a nicer size to, to let in more natural light to this workspace. And um, the only change to the furniture is we um, eliminated a hutch that was over the work desk against this exterior wall. The hutch would have come up and blocked off a portion of this window. So um, that was a quick change with Abby. Uh, so that one hutch has not been ordered. So we'll just have the desk along with a copier in front of this window. Uh, the last slide on this PowerPoint deck I just received at 5.50 p.m. And so we were honestly just looking at this both for the first time together. This is the job schedule from Millennium Builders that I have been chasing down for the ADA restroom renovation, the children's storefront, the interior teen room addition, and the east and west vestibule sliding doors. Um, so I can tell you right now from our list, uh, first slide, we are framing in the ADA restrooms. Uh, but as you can see, the schedule carries us out. It looks like they're going to start the demolition of the children's storefront wall in the next couple of weeks, carrying us into mid-October. They're going to be working on that teen room and the interior finishes. Um, the sliders, the automatic doors for the vestibules have some lead time associated with them. Um, we came up with the final finishes. Uh, Color-wise, we determined that we want the clear anodized finish. It's going to go along really well with the renderings that we saw of the exterior canopy. So everything's going to match outside. Um, but right now, it's pushing us out to, it looks like, uh, the end of December uh, before we go through our punch list. So those sliding doors are really going to be at the tail end. Uh, it looks like mid-December for the installation. I don't anticipate that's gonna hold us back. Uh, I know we have the furniture delivery set for uh, December and I am gonna firm up the dates with Abby. Uh, in meeting with my other contractors though, um, uh, everything's gonna go in a sensible manner. I don't foresee the installation of these vestibule doors interfering with the other work inside the building. Um, 
does anyone have questions or concerns over this schedule? Like I said, we're, we're kind of setting eyes on it together for the first time. I know the lead times have been a concern and overall the uh, substantial completion date is a major, major topic as it um, uh, leads into our discussion about the lease extension at the atrium. So right now, this is the most recent news that I have. Um, it looks like end of December um, for Millennium to complete all three phases of this construction. Questions for Glenn. Mr. Berman. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Glenn, what does that mean in terms of uh, potential move-in date? Well, I think um, at the last governance committee meeting, um, Mr. D. Lorenzo was covering. I believe, um, you know, I'm looking for construction to wrap up in December. Yeah, yeah but actually, it looks like the move-in date is probably closer to the end of March. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt, Glenn. Um, we can hear from uh, Sean on that. He's been working on uh, working with. Uh, library staff and the movers, et cetera, you know, and all that stuff that happens after the punch list on the job. So um, you want, you want to talk? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Sean. Sure. Um, typically, or right now we're looking at about for McMahon about 60 days uh, past that. Um, but that's depending on when that furniture delivery is. I was anticipating the furniture delivery at the beginning of January, but if Abby can work that to be sooner, I can bump everything back. And also um, Mark and I were discussing earlier this week, some of the activities can overlap. So we are still refining that that 60 day period, but for right now I'm using 60 days as a placeholder. Good Tom. Lois. Um, <clears throat> I have the question about what will the schedule be like if we are able to add the Decorative entryways in front and back. Uh, canopies. Canopies. Thank you. Um, we're gonna we're gonna hear from Jeff on those. Um, so maybe we'll just wait to hear. How long okay, I just think it would impact the schedule that. that we're discussing. Yeah, uh, unless it's something like a tent, and you just put it up. Um, well, I'm not sure whether we can, you know, how much we can overlap with that, you know, whether we have to wait till they're totally completed or not. I don't know if we have answers to that yet. Thank you. But they do have to be folded into the schedule. Yes. Um, town manager. Yeah, good evening. Good evening, folks. And thank you so much. Appreciate uh, everyone's uh, participation and efforts to to continue to do an outstanding job. Uh, I would like uh, for Glenn, if I missed it, uh, my apologies, uh, to just uh, afford everyone, mostly our, our listening public, um, the knowledge of the, the space loss uh, becoming ADA compliant. So there can be an appreciation um, to uh, you know the, the challenge that we have uh, moving completely back into uh, McMahon with um, with the full uh, collection that, that we had, because uh, I, I don't believe at this point we'll be able to be accommodated in the space that we left. So if, if you are in a position to, to speak to that, uh, I think it would be uh, educational for those who have no knowledge of the challenge. My audio was cutting out, Al. Did you did you hear me? Uh, briefly, sir. Okay. Uh, what what I would like for you to do is is uh, I'll call it the problem, um, uh, but uh, that's just the way I talk as a military guy, right? Just trying to frame the problem, and uh, I would like for you to please enlighten the public. Uh, if you didn't already cover it, I, I did get distracted as uh, what uh, was this this the difference. And, and space that was lost due to ADA requirements uh, from when McMahon moved out to what they're returning to, um, just so it could be understood uh, the challenge uh, of no, no longer having the, the space to, um, uh, to uh, accommodate the, the collection that left uh, due to uh, some of the mandated um, accommodations of the facility. And yeah, that, so initially the overall scope was uh, drastically reduced 
due to budget concerns. So I believe that close to 3,000 square feet that was supposed to jot out towards Blue Hills Avenue um, was not part of this or is no longer part of this renovation. Um, on top of that, just to meet ADA compliance, we did lose additional space as well with the um, addition of these double interior vestibules. So I think we, as far as square feet, I can't give you a number on what was lost, but we essentially bumped back seven feet from the exterior um, exit door to make those double breakaway um, sliding automatic doors um, workable without going beyond the thermal break. Um, so we did lose a lot from the onset of the project as far as the addition. And then on top of that, you know, we lost technology space as well. There was a small tech center for copier equipment, um, other personal computers that were set up on either entryway um, that were lost now as part of this ADA renovation. In, in uh, terms the bathrooms um, and the bathrooms as well. We had to bump those out to meet ADA um, compliance. So with the vestibule expansion and the restroom expansion and the loss of the addition, there's significantly less space than initially anticipated for a full collection. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I, I think for accuracy purposes, I, I, I would ask that um, our interior designer, Abby, uh, you know, at a future meeting, reiterate what she had uh, shown us in terms of collection space and seating space. And, you know, so that's, that's been, you know, thoroughly redesigned uh, for this smaller area, if you will. Um, and I think that would give us a more accurate picture of, um, you know, apples to apples of what in terms of collection, if that's what we're focusing on right now, um, to understand the differences, you know, and what we might have had, and what we used to have, and what we're going to have, um, uh, doing it in terms of raw square footage is not um, not a fair assessment, if you will, because it's a it's a different layout. Um, so I think you know, hearing it from the interior designer would give uh, the public the best understanding of you know what what we end up with here in the end. And we I, I accept have that, that, Mark. And we I, can certainly I have that. her repeat that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I accept that. If we can have that done uh, just to manage expectations, I, I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah. I would like to say the one thing, though, is that by doing this renovation and opening up the area next to the teens room with an entirely pretty much glass wall to a garden uh, space to take a book out, um, new finishes, uh, high efficiency light fixtures with a um, low Kelvin warm light. The space is gonna be very dramatic in terms of uh, the change between what's now uh, or what's that was there and what's going to be there. So I think it's gonna be a new life in that building. And I think we're gonna meet all the ADA requirements, maximize all the book spaces that we have which we can get you those numbers. But I don't want everybody to forget the fact that the inspiring aspect or the uh, part of the library that has to be the most inspiring is the space itself. So, uh, you know, we can, we can try to look at those book numbers, but I also think that the experience of the library is gonna be twofold uh, better than what it was. So I just wanted to say that. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, questions for Glenn? Clark. Glenn, I, I think when you were, uh, we were talking about the electrical rebates, I think you, you said 15,000 ton. I think you think you probably meant to say 15 ton. Yeah. Did I say 15? It's 15. It's a 15 ton unit. Thank you. Other questions for Glenn. Congratulations on the electrical bid we're right on target. That's uh that's uh, great, great news. And uh, everything looks good, Glenn. We appreciate that. Um, I know you have uh, some invoices for approval. Um, I think we can, I think we can lump those with invoices that uh, Sharon has for us afterwards. And okay. That give, and that will give uh, our architect a chance to, to go next, if, if you are good. 
Yeah, yeah I just have those several invoices, a change order proposal, and I didn't know if you wanted to speak any more about the electrical bid. Um, do do you have some for approval? Is there, are you looking for approval on that tonight? That's uh, my recommendation that we move forward. So we had one response. He was right on the money. This was from Anderson Electric. Um, it's a local company. The owner's from Bloomfield. They're a minority business enterprise. And I have worked with them in the past with great success. And it's just my recommendation that we move forward. So move. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Ike that uh, I, I just want to clarify this. This is this is a building committee recommendation that the uh, town enter into contract with um, Anderson Electric for three hundred forty-six thousand. dollars Yes. Second. Second by Mr. Berman. Discussion. Questions. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Anybody abstaining? We are unanimous. Thank you. Motion passes. Okay. And the rest of it is bills, um, Glenn. Correct. Okay. So we'll we'll uh, we'll move those off to later in the meeting. And um, I guess we're good. Thank you, Glenn. All right. Let's go to um, our architect team. Jeff, you are our architect team. Okay, can you guys uh, see my screen? Uh, yes, sort of. sort of. There we go. Okay. Now you're good. Let me just get this started here. So, uh, as you know, I submitted outside observation report number six last week, last week to the team and to Downs. Uh, RFI and submittals, as you know, are still being reviewed. The lead online data input is ongoing. Uh, as you all know, we have sent a, uh, a proposal for additional services from our team regarding the plaza. So I wanted to share with you two things with this. Is The first part is what happened with the location of the MDC water line. Uh, evidently, the surveyor that was hired by the town used input from the MDC uh, to locate that 1950 or 55 16 inch water main that you'll see in this diagram with a dark dash line at the bottom with the W in the middle. That is where we believe it is. Uh, if you see lower than that in gray is the light colored W with the line that is uh, was on the survey. So I even think when, when Downs was uncovering that pipe, I don't even think it was in either of those positions. So what has happened is that uh, we had a conference call with Downs and the design team uh, with the MDC to discuss strategies. One option was to shore up the pipe. MDC had some concerns with the age of that pipe and didn't want to uh, have you know, the whole project shut down if something was damaged or leaking in that old pipe. So I made a recommendation to them, since we have it open, can the MDC come out and just put a new section of pipe in and fix it right now since we have it all uncovered? And I was met with a lot of resistance that the MDC moves at a different pace and it would it's like a three-year project out and it would be millions of dollars to do that. And they probably want to go down the whole road. So given that, uh, we quickly got together and we saw that uh, the MDC also requires now a 10-foot offset from their water main to the footing, not to the face of the wall, but to the footing of that retaining wall that we had shown. So you see in the dashed uh, lines there, the double lines where it says face of wall and then footing, that is our limit, okay, which means what has to happen is, is, let me just go to the next one. You'll see in yellow was our existing plaza wall. And you'll see that in half tone next to the upturn of the yellow where the red light or, or the red arrow is, that was a trench drain. So what we've had to do is I worked out three different solutions and Taisu and the rest of our team decided that this was probably the best 
way to go, just to follow their offset BMDC line, rotate that plaza wall, shorten that leg where the existing building sign is, which we'll get to. We increased the planting area, and I had to move those three benches just uh, northward of those trees to the next fold bay in order to get that trench drain to line up with the edge of that wall. Uh, and then the key point of all this is because we rotated basically uphill on the slope towards the road, because we have to hit those points on the curb line. That's an existing curb line, existing roads. So we have to meet all those point elevations. Now, on top of that, because we're messing with those elevations, we have ADA cross slopes we have to pay attention to for people in wheelchairs that are experiencing this plaza. So if we see to the north and where the ramp is, those three benches, we have two ADA uh, compliant stations located there for the use of the plaza for people with disabilities. So we've had to add a step, if you see, to the left of those upper benches, uh, one full riser to get those grades to then drop at that point to make sure everything works in terms of the pitches, the slopes, and everything. I think we got it to work. My civil engineer, landscape architects, all are pretty, very confident that by doing that, rotating this wall, moving the trench drain, uh, that we got it. You know, I was really nervous about this, but I think the design is going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Uh, now, regarding that uh, proposal request, uh, the things that we're going to have to we we pretty much started working on them where um, I've directed the team to don't stop, uh, even though we don't have approval yet, because we got to get this going so I can issue a PR. we got to put all the drawings together, the narrative, and get this to Downs so that they can let their subcontractors know and then we can keep moving with the project and not have any delays. So again, on the upper left-hand corner, uh, there is a new riser, um, which means that rail if I don't have it already shown full length, we'll have to increase the length by that riser. We have the lower left-hand corner with the acute angle of that plaza retaining wall. I had to lengthen a little bit. We followed the MDC offset, and then we upturned that wall. And on top of that wall is where the signage is. So Civil Rock Edmund from SLR is going to have to be reworking the trench drains. The landscape architects working on the spot elevations, structural engineers looking at the rotation of that wall and making sure that not only will the drawings change, everything will have to issue if you are on to direct downs on, but to make sure that things like that corner and that return upslope is not going to cause any changes to the uh, structure and the foundation of that wall. So that's basically, in a nutshell, the scope. So you'll see here the overall sort of feel of the plaza, the, the idea that I tried to convey to MDC by not touching the plaza, but I think it ended up being okay, is that that left side of that plaza, the south side there, is a little nook. So you have layers of intimacy with people that want to come out and read a book or be social. That's a more quiet area. You've got more plantings back there now. It kind of hooks into that space, draws you into the main entrance on that plaza stair. Technically, the riser is going to be easier for the subcontractor to pour and make because the foundations for that the lower riser is going to be continuous all the way across now. And we've leveled out the plaza slightly, so I think it will be a nice experience. The concern I have, and I would like to open it up for discussion, is this signage. You'll see originally, um, let me just go one more. Originally, we had a wider return wall. So we had uh, one layer or one line of text, right? So we had about one foot six tall uh, aluminum painted white box that had the letters cut out and they were to be backlit at night. So you could see them. And that is going to have to shrinken. Look what I just do. That will have to be reduced in length and we'll have to stack the the text browser library same material same color same backlit same scope with the with the sign 
but that was uh, Tai Su and I's initial reaction and proposal of what we th should do with that signage. So I'm opening that up for discussion. If that's okay with the committee, uh, I think I believe Mark had some thoughts on it as well. Well, we've got, I see three things we need to take some action on. Number one is the, just the redesign of the plaza. Um, number two is the redesign of the sign. And number three is TSKP's additional services fees. So we have those three things. Let's, um, why don't we take the, the redesign of the plaza first? Um, questions, mm -hmm. comments? Bob Ike making a motion to approve the design as presented. Is that what I hear? Yes, sir. Okay. Do we have a second on that? Patrick, Patrick is seconding. Let's have discussion on the on the redesigned plaza. Lois. Thank you. Um, I just have a question about the space uh, for the wheelchair to get to the top and turn and get into the doors. I'm, I'm sure that's all does required by ADA, but could you reassure me that there will be plenty of space, particularly if there's someone coming out in another wheelchair? Yes, the, the ramp width, just to give you a sense of scale, is five feet wide. Each landing is a five foot square, which meets the five foot circle for the turnaround radius. When you get to the top of that ramp at the edge of that slab that then returns into the main entrance, I can't recall, uh, what is that dimension? I can't see that dimension. Uh, it's it's wider at that point. Um, it's wider than five feet. Not enough for two full 10 foot circles, but they can pass by each other easily. But none of that has changed in this, Nothing has changed. Yeah, in, that in has not the, changed. In terms of the ramp. Um, Correct. Well, I'm going to trust you. It, it looks scary to me to think of somebody going backwards down those stairs as they're trying to get into the uh, into the building. But I trust well, they you. Will, they will be, you know, okay, they will be coming straight down and they will turn in that very large uh, open area there where it says main entrance. Yeah. At the top of the stairs. So there is a significant amount of room. Sorry, it's cut off on the left, but that goes into the porch and a very large area for the um, for the main entrance. Okay. That's my main concern about what I'm seeing. Yeah, that's not a wall there uh at the no. at the top of the ramp heading to the left. That that heavy line is deceiving. It looks like a you know a wall. It really yeah. it leads into the porch, right? Where, where, well, where... on column line on, at the top of the ramp on column six point one, that is a glass wall because that's the vestibule basically on the other side of that wall. When you continue southward uh, towards the plaza wall that we're changing, uh, that open space there where it says basically main entrance, that whole area to the left of that. Um, and in front is is plenty of room for. Can you go back to the, the perspective of view of of that? Yeah, then, then I think that'll make it clear. Okay, there you go. Yeah, um, so you see the vestibule there at the top of the ramp. It's a glass wall, and that's approximately six to maybe six to eight feet deep there. It's the perspective's kind of off. You can see even the stairs look a little distorted, and the ramp itself is five foot wide. And each of those squares, the landings, is a five-foot square. It meets the ADA requirements, and code reviewers and everybody reviewed all this with the town and our independent code consultant. So it should be it's absolutely fine. But you see, to the left there, the vestibule, where it joins into that different texture of flooring, that whole area there is open. And then the, the idea was that they would turn and turn to go down the ramp and then exit out, use the plaza, or be picked up. Uh, but Mark, you're right. Nothing has changed. Uh, Bob, Berman. thank you, Chair. Uh, Jeff, if I am correct in my in what I'm seeing here, we have the jut now 
on the plaza, which we didn't used to have, wasn't that like a square or rectangle? Yes, let me show you, let me go back a couple of slides. So originally in yellow was the original wall, which overlapped that 10 foot requirement that the MDC has. Right? So the yellow was where the existing plaza wall well, it is currently. That's right. We're going to rotate that wall to follow the MDC requirement. Right. Go to the next By slide. Doing... Yeah, next the next. Slide. Yeah, that's the one where I, I'm trying to equate the two, and I'm having a difficult time doing it. Oh, I can help you. I can help you with that. If you look at the Prazer Library sign. Yep. Imagine that is one line of text instead of a stacked text, and it is growing to the left double its length or a little more than double its length going to the left. So that's where the 10-foot encroachment problem is. Yes, that wall okay. was straightened straightened right. out. And now 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 I got it. That that's so where, that would have, that's where yeah, my so by doing, was. Yeah, so by doing that, it's hard, it's hard, you know, I have to keep going back and forth on this too. But if you look, if you look at the way that wall, imagine where that wall was, the rating was very differently. So once we rotate uphill with that, we have to make sure things start to compound and we just got to make sure that we catch every little nuance. So it's important to have civil, landscape, structural, myself, all eyes on this thing to make sure that we're moving that trench drain the way we need to without causing a ripple effect, making sure we meet the cross slopes, which is a requirement and making sure that it's a plaza that's going to be experientially pleasant as we originally had planned it. So we're trying to make an opportunity out of a problem always. And if I can make that pocket deeper with some plantings and make it more of an intimate space for people to come out and enjoy it, you know, as a layered space so that you can have some intimacy with a book, you can have some more public uh, experiences, you can sit in the bench across the way with a backdrop of trees and then view people walking by, you know, so there's still these, the potential of the three different layers or more possibly of programming of the space. So I was nervous initially about that whole thing, but I think it's going to be fine. Uh, no, I, I was raising the question because I was trying to figure out, okay, is there a way to make the sign? So it's, um, across the library is on one line wow. instead of two lines. But now I understand why it doesn't work. Well, we well it could work, but um, I talked to Tyson at length about this. The importance of having that sign read in this direction towards you and I right now is that that uh, Blue Hills Avenue and the town green and the church and all that was sort of a uh, cue no. to the main entrance here. No. Blue, so Blue I had Blue thought. Tunxus. You mean Bloomfield Avenue, Tunxus? Yes. Tunxus. So. So I, I had thought that we could keep the low single line text and just keep it on that angled wall, but then it would be facing south and you wouldn't see it. It wouldn't be grabbing you as you, as you see the building. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, uh, Elizabeth has her hand up. So I'm just trying to think through this um, and it's, it's, different than how I envisioned it, I guess, when we, when the original drawings had first come out. So this, when you're standing at town hall, I remember in the very beginning, Ty Seuss said it was, you, you would be able to stand and look catty corner and it would be this great plaza effect. Are you still going to have that effect from across the way? Yes, because you see the plaza pattern extends out to the existing sidewalk. The only difference you're going to feel is the rotation of that stone wall that's going to that, that's going to make people wonder, okay, what is what's going on in there? It's a nice little uh, courtyard within the plaza. You know, so you're going to see more of that stone wall. You're going to see uh, uh, basically uh, a tightening of the plaza at that sign, but everything is going to release open to the street still. Okay. It just adds another sort of layer of intimacy as you approach the main entrance. 
Okay. Um, and that the the wall where it culminates with the Prosser Library sign, I presume it has to be that long? Yes, because that, that long wall to the left at an angle yes. meets, the 10th, meets the MDC requirement. Okay. That's a, re that's a retaining wall. I mean, that's its primary yes. purpose. Yes. The one with the Prosser Library sign on it. Well, the long with leg behind it. Right. Well, all, all of it is a retaining wall that works with each other. Yeah, if go to the next slide, I think that will show it. Okay. The, uh, the plan view? Is that what you're... Yeah. And then the... Those retaining wall. Yeah. Oh, and I'm just trying to picture where the sidewalk, how the sidewalk plays into it all. Well, the sidewalk, if you see the pattern of the plaza, right, it extends from left to right to the sidewalk along Tungsta, so then it turns around the curb cut and runs south. So what you're going to see is more long to the left of where that plaza ed, uh, edge ends, right? So the people at That's the bus the stop? Pardon me? Okay, I'm 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 having trouble visualizing it all, but um, I think I'm getting it. Thank you, Jeff. Well, I can show you the next slide. So again, in yellow is the the wall that was originally there. So see how it's like a, a rectangular box, sort of U shape. Yes. That that yellow leg just rotates and becomes the red leg. So that extended wall with the Praza Library sign gets shorter. Are you good, Elizabeth? We have more. Yes, yes, I'm good. Thank okay. you. Good, thank you. Okay. You're basically, the sign is the sign is where the uh, yellow meets the red. On on that. Correct. Well, the sign is sign is the 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 little red tip there with my red circle around it. So the red is the new placement of the right. wall that then turns up. Yep. So instead of being like eight feet long, it's now or 10 feet long, it's now four foot something, four foot two. Yep. Okay, so we have a <clears throat> we have a motion uh, to approve th this uh, redesign of the plaza and retaining wall. Any other comments or questions on that? We'll talk about the sign next. Okay, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any nays? Anybody abstaining? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, let's let's dive into the sign. Questions, comments. Clark, I, I just noticed that from a, a maintenance point of view, I don't know. I always drive by buildings, and the lights are partially out, and you, and it just looks sloppy. I mean, is this? I know they're LEDs, but and they say LEDs are supposed to last. I don't know how long, but is this really going to be a low maintenance item for the library to keep looking, you know, top notch as this whole building's going to look? Um, well, those are not those are not individually lit letters. They're, they're no, back, these are they're all backlit from one light source. Is yeah, that imagine yes, imagine there is a box with each of those letters is cut out. Inside that box is a uh, LED light, a series of LED lights. And I believe we have a um, a clear or a colored sort of uh, Lexan type product back there to sort of protect uh, everything in that box. There is a hinged component of this box where you can get in and change the fixture if you need to or work on it and maintain it. But it's basically a weather protective aluminum uh, with a high performance coating on it, white to play on the white of the rest of the building. The stone underneath is going to be, you know, stone. It's going to be the gray sort of, uh, uh, you'll see it in Connecticut 
stone walls, uh, calling into memory the history of, of that. Um, but it's going to be sort of a gray that plays with the concrete, uh, the plaza, the steps, um, and the porch rails. So it's going to it's going to all sort of tie in together. Now, as far as the maintenance of the lights, I know there's a life expectancy of LEDs. I think after I don't know so many thousands of hours, uh, it does sort of lessen in in its luminance, but. Uh, you know, I, I I can't predict when or how. You know, ten years, twenty years. If you know, the lighting industry is changing constantly, so um, I don't suspect there will be any issues. In fact, LED lighting, I think we do that all the time on buildings exterior. All our exterior lighting with the rest of the library project is going to be LED, and it's exposed to the elements. So I don't foresee any you know any issues. Clark, were you concerned about individual letters blowing out? Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they wouldn't they wouldn't be individually lit. How, how many bulbs are are lighting up this light? I uh, lighting up this sign. Sorry. Uh, good question. Uh, I don't have a submittal on that. And I'll have to pull the spec and see if we actually say that all we 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 requiring is a backlit uh, cutout letters, so it will be. Uh, fixture that the manufacturer uh, supplies for this. In the past, we have done schools where we have signage on that where they provide uh, either a half a dozen or a single, depending on on the effect that we want of how much light's going to come through those letters. So ideally, it'll probably be one strip light on the bottom, one on the top that will wash down the inside face of that and illuminate them all consistently. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, who do we have? Okay, Elizabeth. Is this the only sign that's going to say library? Yes. Okay, so from... So don't forget, originally this is what we had. Yes. On that same wall. I mean, I I know I'm probably going to be a one side of the pendulum on this, but I would like the word library to be five feet by six feet large. I, I want everyone to be able to see it. Um, and I just want to make sure that it's absolutely, you're going to be able to see it from all the, uh, are you going to be able to see it from every single um, car lane? I'm worried about the way that it's it's facing. Yeah, it's pretty much parallel with Tunxus Avenue. That's that's what's proposed here. Yeah, well, it's it's the same in both cases. What we have originally, and what it is now, it's whether it's a long line of text or a stack text. And in this case, we'll have to do a stack text. So we kept it basically reading from the same position, which is not as long, and it's taller. So we won't see the words "library" on Mountain Avenue. The word "library." No, that's correct. That's correct. We weren't going to see it on Mountain Avenue anyway. Well, let's put it this way. It was never in the plan. If we want to consider additional signs, um, we can certainly do that. Um, I think, you know, as, as, as part of the architecture, um, this was the only sign considered. Um, I believe there are other traffic signs and so forth you know to direct people on the project but um no there's no other exterior cross or library sign in the project right now um maybe um maybe jeff we can give you that task to consider that if that makes any sense um and what how you would handle that well i know um there is a I mean, I hate to start changing things now, but yeah, maybe we can come up with something. I'm just trying to think, you know, if we if we do the the uh, cut backlit lettering that's cut out and and standing off from that stone wall, it gets kind of low. 
right? And then we still have the issue because uh, it makes sense that it's on the long part of the south wall at that point. Otherwise, we'll have to stack the. Well, I guess we could still do it on the stone wall, but this this is a way to sort of make a beacon, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, there might be something appropriate at the garage uh, entrance area that you know that could make sense. Um, so I think the whatever, goal here whatever, was... what, whatever you think might be appropriate over there, I think could make sense. Um, uh, and we we also have as you as you come down Tunxis from the north, um, you know, the north side of the building too. Um, I, I don't I don't know. I'm I'm throwing all that out because Elizabeth, I think you, I think you have a good point on that. Um, I I know uh, you know we're not we're not a commercial building, but it's an important building. Um, I'll tell you the Wells Fargo building in the center of town is a small rectangle and it has a very large sign on all four sides of it, right? Um, not that we want to be that, but but I I think I think looking at some additional library signs might make sense. We kind of have a consensus on that, Lois. I understand what Elizabeth saying. Um, but we haven't planned for it. If if I were going to put it, I'd probably put it facing south because coming from the from the east toward the west, you see uh, a great deal of what would be on that south wall. But on the on the other hand, this is going to be a glorious building, and it is going to stand out on its own. And I think people are going to wonder what it is, and they're going to find out very quickly. And and not have to be told it's a library over and over again. I I, I think it's going to speak for itself. Yeah, I agree with you completely, Lois. If you think of Frank Lloyd Wright and the the layering of the space from inside outside, you'll start with an urn at the curb entry off the sidewalk, and you slowly enter the project, and and you know what it is, the nature of it. So I agree. I think too much graphics might be not so good. Well, it's you know it's it's one of those things we can feel out and add um, when it's all up easily. So yeah, we'll have power there. Uh, we'll spray power paint, there. Um, right? Um, no, um, but but it is something that can be added later if we you know once we get a better feel for how it all comes together. Um, but I think this is the significant sign, and. Um, Let's hear from more people. So after, I think the town manager. Okay, town manager. Yeah, um, Mark, I'm in line with uh, your initial thoughts of what you were saying, um, just to see uh, how we may uh, capture capture some thoughts through some some renderings to capture this. I, I think we've had uh, too much of an investment in this uh, to not make it uh, abundantly clear as to what it is. Uh, and uh, we we talk about uh, we'll, we're going to become accustomed to it in our community, but the fact is we're we're going to be drawing uh, folks from all across the region, and um, and and I just think that uh, you know just uh, planning for that uh, that branding of it uh, uh, with with the name prominently displayed uh, from a couple of uh, uh, different avenues of approach uh, will will suit us well. So uh, I'm in line with what you were saying, and, and I'm also in line with what you're saying. You know, perhaps we can we can wait and see and, and um, how it actually turns out. But um, you know, I I I am more for um, larger uh, larger depiction of of the actual title uh, personally. So thank you for your opportunity. Thank you. You know, you know, if we do postpone that to the future, we would at least. Need to understand whether we need to electrify those locations or not, but just a consideration. So I see Anthony nodding his head on that one. Um, and Ava. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, two things. One, I absolutely agree with our town manager. Remember that um, Bloomfield Public Library is also part of the LCI consortium. So Everyone in that consortium and others across the state can also use their library card at our library, and they do, um, knows where it is. And given that someone in the last week or so um, heard from a resident 
that they were wondering what that building was because they had no idea after all these months and with the construction that that was going to be the library. So even people in town really need to, to know. My second point is um, a question about the parking area that's going to be at Riley. Would there not be signage there so that people would know that that's where you would go for the bulk of the parking for the library? And um, and I'll get off. Yeah, good question, Ava. I, I seem to recall there are uh, post signs of some kind, but I think we should look into that and understand, you know, be reminded what they are. Um, cause yes, there's a lot of information that needs to be told about that parking lot, you know, I got to look outside. I could remember that there was a view. But we don't want people we, to we, think that we're right back to the same kind of parking lot we have now where people would probably sell their grandmother for a parking spot. We're going to have a nice big lot. It, it, we, we want people to know that and right, go there. right, right. Point taken. I believe there's a tall sign on um, on Mountain Avenue. I got to look at the civil drawings and the layout of the site furnishings, but I believe that there's a sign, a taller sign on that side. It's just not illuminated because we ran into this issue with the MDC again. This was five months ago uh, when we were installing our state sign on the outside of the building, and they wanted to make sure that it wasn't going where... Uh, the sign was shown on the civil drawings because it's encroaching on their water main again. Uh, but let me check the civil drawings and the site furnishing, but there might be a sign on Mountain Ave side that's taller, just not illuminated. How, how about we task Jeff with um, a uh, presentation at a future, future meeting to review all the signage? How about that? Jeff, did I hear you say, sure. <laughs> Yes, I will do that. Thank you, sir. Okay. I think that's important. Patrick. Thank you, Chair. I, I just wanted to add my comment is with regard to the the original Prosser Library sign that had to be removed, uh, you know, when we started construction. Couldn't that sign also be utilized somewhere, maybe on Riley or in between Riley and the library? That's the sign that fits with all the other Bloomfield, uh, the signage throughout Bloomfield on all the buildings, all the parks. Uh, I'm assuming we still have that sign. I don't know, maybe it's something to take into consideration that could be utilized uh, somewhere, uh, maybe not right by the building since it probably doesn't fit in with our new design, but maybe on the Riley lot or some grassy area. Um, but that's certainly a large sign, and it's very clear from there that it's, you know, the library. So yeah, something, something to think else, about. Jeff, to consider. You know, I'm just thinking about this. It's partially humorous, but not. What if that whole bridge elevation, all the side pickets spelled out Crosser Library? It's too late now, but the bridge becomes a sign. That's a great idea, or, or something library-ish wording. Yeah, uh, the bridge is a great location for something, you know? <laughs> so, okay, a lot of opportunity, and I, and I think the need is there. So um, let's go to, no, um, yeah, let's hold off on the sign then. Um, uh, we'll, we'll give you an opportunity to, you know, play with that a little bit more. Um, I, I, you know, as far as uh, you know, taking that originally designed sign and just putting it on the longer leg of that wall and have a face more towards mountain than Tunxis, I, I question why that might not work. I, you know, it's at an angle, um, especially in conjunction with other signage. So, um, we'll, we'll leave that for your consideration. Mr. Okay. Berman. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I also want to point out that you're coming down uh, Park Avenue, headed toward Tunxis, or you're coming down Tunxis. You've got a big glass vista there in front of you, and you're going to see stacks of books. You're going to see chairs for, for people to read from, 
it's immediately going to be apparent that that's something like, like a library just from looking at it. So maybe the answer to the sign, the problem with the sign there is not to have the sign facing Tuxes, have it face mountain and have it longer. Because if you're coming down park, you're coming down Tuxes, you're gonna see into the building. That's true. We can keep the original sign and just put it on that longer wall, like we right. sort of like what we originally had. But just keep it on that south corner. Yeah, I, th I think a longer, lower sign is a little more tasteful than a square yeah. or taller so, sign. That's just let me do this. Opinion, but. I will I will look at that overall, and I will come up with a few different things for next time for us to discuss. Okay. One will be that. One will be maybe some standoff letters on the stone wall high, uh, and I'll see if I can come up with a couple other other precedents and other things that might look sophisticated enough and welcoming enough so that we meet everybody's comments here because i think they're all good comments i'll okay. spend some time looking at that any other comments on the sign all right now uh, last item for jeff jeff you've got a uh your um additional services fee proposal for Correct. us can you put that up do you have that? Uh... Yeah, let me, let me get out of here. Let's see. Is this it? Yes, this was it. It was distributed in this package, but I think it'd be helpful if you could uh, yeah. put it up. Yeah, so basically, give it, given the description of all the work that uh, mm -hmm needs to be addressed with all of our team members and to keep the downs moving. Um, we're looking for approval for this so we can uh, meet the schedule and expectations of everybody. Um, so I got proposals from each of our consultants, included ours, and we've aligned all the scopes of work. So as soon as we get approval from this, we're going to get uh, the uh, coordinates and the spots from Downs and their sub as far as where this pipe is exactly. SLR, our civil engineer, will plot those in his CAD file, convey that to um, uh, Richter Segan, our landscape architect, start working on the spot elevations. I've started to make changes uh, with, with, with the steps and everything like that to meet the MDC thing. So I'm trying to hedge this a bit for to expedite it so that we're not uh, slowing the project down. So uh, yeah, we're requesting that these uh, additional services be uh, approved so that we can move forward on this. So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Ike for TSKP additional services, uh, the plaza wall in the amount of $18,171. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Berman. Discussion? Clark? I don't, I don't do you think, you think the charge for the landscape is, is fair? I mean, how much changed here? I don't understand what landscape architects, maybe you should ask Jeff, but why that's almost as much as TSKP's fee, you know? And it seems like, okay, move a few bushes around it. I mean, I'm, I don't know, I'm simplifying it, but. Yeah, yeah, I think you are because I think they're going to be the key uh, component here. If I can scroll down to their estimate, did I pass it? I passed it. Um, basically, they're going to be working with uh, setting those spot elevations and uh, positioning for rock. He's going to handle, the, you know, the trench drain piping relocation or like that, but. Relooking at all the spot elevations and the ADA cross slopes is going to be the biggest key component of this. Um, I'm not going to say that what uh, our other consultants aren't going to have an important role because structurally is definitely an important role and uh, mine as well. But um, I think increasing that planting area, relocating those benches, uh, the cross slopes, and making sure that that riser works with those cross slopes that we're adding and that there's going to be no issues. In fact, they've told me that they think it's going to be better. 
Um, so I, I, you know, I think it's for me, it's definitely reasonable because they've always been proactive. They're uh, in the weeds, uncovering things all the time that, that I might not be seeing or the other team members might not be seeing. So it's not just moving plants around with these guys. They have a program software called Civil 3D that is similar to Revit. It's a CAD version of it that deals with all the grading contours, pitches, slopes. So um, I would hesitate to think that the role isn't isn't uh, a strong one here in this in this particular plaza problem. That makes sense to me. I mean, these I would have thought the civil engineer would have done most of that. The grades. No, they're 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 basically uh, drains, piping, uh, landscape is basically topo grading, uh, things like that. So I think of infrastructure, civil utilities, things like that, and uh, their role is going to be minimal. I'm going to tell them where the trench grade goes based on what my landscape architect says as far as the ADA cross slopes, and then he's going to know where to tell Downs where to run the pipe in a drawing that we send to them with a PR. So we all have to work in different capacities, but we all have to talk to each other and make sure that we all understand what we're doing. Okay, I think Richter Segan, the landscape architect, has the biggest role. It's, you know, I mean, I do too, but I think they, they have a significant role here. Thank you. Jeff, can you uh, confirm that um, this will include whatever uh, town planner requires here? Because you're going to have to talk to the town planner about this change. And I, I don't know whether it's going to be a staff review or whether you're going to have to go back to planning and zoning with this. But, good point. you know, I'd like, good to, point. I'd, I'd like to think that, um, you know, you will confirm it, it includes whatever they're going to make you do for this much money. I'll do that. I just want to make that clear. You So this would include whatever planning and zoning is going to require here. Okay. That brings up another point, Mark, with the sign. Since we've changed that, potentially with my future options for the next committee meeting, how much change is going to trigger a review? Yeah, well, that's that's going to be uh, subject to the, the town planner. You know, we'd have to ask okay. the planner... Um, many times these can be uh, by simply by staff review. Um, Today, this morning, I did put a call in, left a message to discuss all that with him, including McMahon's canopy. Great. Great. So I will try to reach him again tomorrow. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Anybody abstaining? Thank you very much. Motion passes. And thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everybody. All right. So, long meeting. Let's move on to um, Sean from Colliers. Jeff, done. I, Jeff, I assume you're done, right? Yes. Um, did you want to talk about the canopy at, at McMahon? I think we're. I, I mean, I, 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 still I working could. On I had, it, right? Yeah, I'm still working on it, but I think it, I, I do have something I could share with everybody just to keep everybody posted on what's happening here. Yeah, you had Maybe that picture up. Pull, which was yeah, let me see if I can pull it up. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, okay, let's start this. Okay, so um, as you know, I promised everybody an estimate, and I got the estimate for the canopy. This is a design-build structures unlimited teamed with cow wall, uh, the glazing system uh, that's going to be on top of this canopy. So they work in tandem, and it's basically a design-build. They provide the canopy, posts, cow wall, beam structure, everything. Uh, Glenn and I, in early discussions, thought this would be a you know, very appropriate way to do it. So it's turnkey and that they, we wouldn't have to, uh, you know, deal with any of the issues that usually come up with a custom sort of canopy project. 
uh, what I think we knew from the beginning was that the footings and foundations, uh, and they confirmed it with their estimate, that is not included in their canopy, which seems to make sense. So what I need to do is, uh, you know, we have the estimate, there's some technical description here, what their canopy is, the sizes, the size of the post and everything. So what they, I've, I've already been proactive getting them to get Jeremy, my structural engineer, the uplift, the weight, all the specifics in terms of how he can actually do a quick drawing that shows what type of footing and foundation he's going to need. I don't know if it's going to be a singular support sonotubes type footing uh, or uh, continuous footing. So I know that there's not a lot of snow drift on this roof, uh, and but Jeremy's got to calculate and get from them information on wind uplift, the weight, dead load, things like that, so he can size those footings and foundations. Once we get that, then uh, Glenn's going to have to, I'll get Glenn a drawing, and then Glenn is going to have to get an estimate for some concrete guys to prepare uh, for this canopy to be installed. So that's the piece that I'm uh, working on right now to get that final piece. The canopy itself came in, I thought, pretty reasonable at $69,100. Uh, and then, but what we need to be uh, confident with is that there's any pricing for the concrete work. You know, the, I'm sure the footings will have to be down uh, below the frost line. And um, in the past, it's, I mean, it's not a huge canopy. So my hope it's going to be not an extensive set of footings and foundations that shouldn't be. This is all uh, lightweight constructions, not anything majorly structural like steel and beams and everything like that. So it's a prefabricated drop in place thing. So uh, that's the next step. So I'm, I'm hesitant to say uh, to get approval for the canopy yet because that's just for the canopy. That's not for the grounding and the anchoring and the footings of this thing. I wanted to wait until I give everybody those numbers for that, um, but I have started to uh, work on uh, where the placement of their columns would be. And so I can hedge uh, getting a drawing together to Jeremy of uh, how he can actually design uh, the footing and the foundation, right? So this is their estimate. They broke it down, heights, column dimensions, and uh, the note there items not included. Uh, existing piers, grout, insulation, footings, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the, that piece is the piece that we have to get next. Okay, so, so we we're gonna be, it. yeah, so we're gonna be looking at um, some structural engineering fees, correct? Yes. To design the piers. Um, and then we're looking at um, uh, the cost of installing the piers and then we have the canopy as well. So, so once that's all assembled, and then we're also considering two of these uh, rather than one, you know, one front, one back. So, you know, once we have all those numbers, we can figure out how we, you know, how we want to do it. Correct. We, and the two dry, two dry wheels as well. And also I know Glenn has his hand up. I'll, I'll get to you in a second. We're, we're going to have to, um, you know, if we do two of these, you know, I'm not sure for crossing a threshold for procurement wise, it's a proprietary item, um, but uh, somehow we still have to solicit bids, I would think. I'm, I'm not sure how all that's going to work, um, but I'll look to Glenn and, and Joe to yeah, we would figure need out that aspect of it, you know, mm -hmm. Glenn, you got electrical too. Correct. The electrical, yeah. we, we would need to uh, solicit three bids on that, unfortunately, which makes it tricky. We're actually undergoing a fuel islands canopy at our public works facility right now, and we're dealing with the whole footings and, and, and canopy installation. And that's that's the challenging part is soliciting those three bids. So you'll have all the good experience from that to use on this, right? Huh. Yeah, well, I've got a great resource. Our facility manager, Matt Childress, has been working on that project, so I should have some additional resources. Um, I did mention the dry well installation to our town engineer. Um, I think he, he kind of frowned upon, upon that option. I'm not sure what else we can consider for 
uh, drainage. I mean, uh, like a simple, I don't know how much water that would shed ultimately. Um, but I know they were well, you'll see, you'll see. on the dry well. Yeah, you see to the left there on the offset, and it's symmetrical, so we'd have in the uh, opposite side the inset of that uh, wall there, the brick wall to the left of this rendering. You'll see where the canopy comes close to the corner of that wall above that far person's head above that. Yeah. That was the scupper down to the drain uh, dry well. I mean, we could, I could look at possibly. Um, I have to think about this a little bit. Maybe, maybe running a, uh, a downspout. Uh, I have to think about how to do that. If we push that gutter in towards uh, the entry a little bit and get a downspout there, we have to route it to a swell or a gravel swell or something along that edge. But I don't think there's a huge amount of water that's going to be coming off there, but there will be some significant water coming off like, occasionally. So. Yeah, we have to. I have to think about that. Maybe there's one on each side. If we pull the canopy away from the edges, possibly run it on the sides so you don't see it. Run it down the back column, and then in the space between the column and the brick wall, maybe we do a trench drain out, sort of a Carlos Scarpa detail, where we can uh, section out uh, from the sidewalk to the brick wall a nice little pocket. Uh, uh, stone swale so that the water can flow in that and out. You know, we, yeah, we should. I can, I can look at that a little closer. Um, can okay. we do above? Can we do above grade uh, water collection as a uh, as a green learning exercise? I have no idea how how that how code applies Wait. to that, but. You see what I'm saying, Glenn, is like if we split on either side of that, we pull the canopy on each side away from the building, say a foot. I think that's about what I have it now, or maybe a little bit more. And then take that gutter that's close to that back column, run it down that column, right? We'll have to, you'll see a little bit of that gutter and downspout on the uh, brick wall side of that column, so you don't really see it. Comes down into a pocket trench between the brick wall and our column line with a stone uh, maintenance strip, sort of stone swale that comes forward on either side of the sidewalk and it becomes like a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a stone retainage area, you know, like those, uh, those swale or the uh, retainage pond kind of thing and have some natural grasses and flowers growing up make it around there. I mean, it could be, an opportunity for something that might tie into that outdoor reading space uh, with some plantings and things. I, you know, we'll have, to, we'll have to brainstorm together and think about it. There could be a way to to ease his mind. Right. Okay. Some something else to complicate this little. Pro no such thing as a little project, uh -huh. right? Okay. Keep going. Keep going on it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Berman. Oh, Lois. How many points we get for lead for developing rain gardens? But that's what you're yeah, I was thinking about. I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking about that as far as having that be an element that yeah. could be tied into that courtyard, that reading garden. Yeah, you'll get. And we can have hours. different layers of that rain garden. Let me think about this. If you have any ideas, Lois, send me some emails of things that you might be That's thinking. That's my only idea at this point, but <laughs> I, they've been very popular and, and quite well used uh, for very difficult situations in the place where we are in the summer. Okay. Maybe, uh, maybe there's a rain chain. Yeah, rain chain on each of those sides. Let me think about it. Okay, Ava. Yeah, thanks. Um, the school where I taught <clears throat> had a large entry canopy, sort of similar, the angle was different, but um, we did have flower beds along both sides with um, perennials that were pretty sturdy <clears throat> and it provided a bunch of the water for them. It was, it was a very nice system and it looked very nice and the kids kind of could take ownership and, you know, weed and take care of some of those beds. And so it might tie in pretty nicely. Good, it could. I know Glenn said 
you know, you're looking for uh, more more landscaping. So that could all fit in. Okay. Um, now, Jeff, are you are you concluded? I think so. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's enough for now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's quarter past eight. That's enough for now. Thank you. No, thank you, Jeff. Okay, Sean, I'm sorry to turn you on and off, but you're back on again. <laughs> hey, um, just get to my right screen here. Okay. Um, as usual, my report starts, or thank you, Mr. Chair. My report starts with the uh, special testing. Uh, Tri-State will continue to test the con concrete slabs as they go in, the mortar and the masonry, the cold form steel. Uh, then all reports go to Michael Horton Associates, the special uh, inspector, inspection coordinator, as well as the local building official. Um, the past couple meetings, I've been researching uh, what we need for a budget extension for the remainder of special testing. Um, so I did submit that as part of your package, um, this budget from Tri-State Materials. Uh, this has a breakdown um, as the backup pages as to exactly what testing they'll do. I have reviewed this with the, um, the construction team as well as uh, Michael Horton Associates gave their opinion on it as well and then confirmed back with Tri-State Materials. So I am suggesting a PO extension or a new PO for the $39,650.50. Um, again, that's a budget PO, so they do bill as they come out. So potentially it could be less. Um, I spoke with Jason on site with Downs. We will try to, you know, coordinate as many of those tests in one day as possible, but it is subject to the construction schedule. Can you put that in, in perspective with our budget or line item for that? Uh, we just had that budget meeting the other day. So um, total, we had um, about 70, I believe the number was 70,000 total. We've used 20,000. Um, that doesn't sound, oh, we use more than 20,000 because of the GO peer testing. Um, ultimately, I believe we were about 9,000 over budget um, from the 70,000 when the- Inclusive of this PO. If Yes, inclusive of this. If this is, this added to that would put the total about 9,000 over the total budget. Okay, do we have a motion to uh, extend the PO in the amount of $39,650? Moved by Mr. Ike, seconded by Second. Patrick. Thank you very much. Discussion? Lois. I had a question about the materials that they presented with respect to the budget. Were they, were the, they giving us rates for things that they do um, in general? Or were they telling us specifically what they were going to do for us? Specific to the project. The rates are by the state contract. So the, the, the rates for everything are published as part of the state contract. That's how they were selected initially. And then that was uh, specifically to the project, what testing will, be, will need according to the statement of special inspections. So the second page that you showed us, which had all of those that long list of uh, yeah things. Hmm? These are things that they're going to do for us. They're not things that they do in general. Correct. Um, in their business. Correct. So it's based on, um, so, so it's breaking down by number of visits. So for example, the first line item, the subgrade fill and placement, they're anticipating 10 number of visits at $248 per visit. Thank you. Hmm? Any other questions, comments, Mr. Berman? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I, I'm looking at this, and now I'm trying to make, make some sense. Original PO amount was 20198 and they're saying the total PO request, which I think includes that, is $39,650. It does not include the original 20, no. It does not? No. They're asking for 39000 additional. Because I say total PO requested of 35178 
which implies the twenties included in it. No, I confirmed that with them because I had the same okay. question. So I did confirm that okay. the 35, um, it, technically the 35 is the additional, what they're asking for, but that 4,472 that you see, that's what they've billed over their PO. Um, as you recall, there's a couple okay. um, outstanding invoices. Right. That's what represents that 4,000. Okay. All right. Now I understand it. Yeah, I had the same question. Any other questions, comments, clerk? So the 35 is what they expect to spend yeah. to continue. Cor correct. That's one way of looking at it. The 35s, the anticipated till the end, and the four was what we need to recoup. Anyone else? Questions? Okay. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any nays? Aye. Abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, on to commissioning. Uh, as Anthony mentioned in his report, Van Zelm has been on site. They did a walkthrough uh, to check the status. Uh, also coming up, they'll be meeting with the subcontractors doing the actual installation to discuss and review the um, expectation and the communication that'll happen through that process. Um, in terms of move management, as I touched base on earlier, we are carrying uh, a 60 day um, post substantial completion move in schedule that we're still refining. That includes everything from um, furniture delivery, assembly installation, WB Myers moving time, um, final cleaning, as well as the staff uh, items that the staff needs to take care of. Um, for Prosser, I do uh, carry a little more buffer on that because of the um, building flush that will have to happen. We're still working out the details of that, but we'll continue to refine those days and try to um, bring those days in tighter um, and get that information over to you. Um, the, and yes, um, as we talked about that, uh, McMahon substantial completion date is looking at mid-December. So we'll tighten that schedule in as well. Um, re regarding the uh, swing space and um, uh, the atrium and moving out of there, I did, I did ask Anthony uh, a little while ago if we would have the opportunity to take all the crated materials that are at the atrium and move them once and once only to Prosser where they're going, you know, at an appropriate time. And I, and I believe the opportunity exists, um, um, you know, because of the timing of things that uh, we, we have the community room in the new Prosser library, which essentially when it's completed is an empty room, you know, it's loose tables and chairs. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would make a great staging area for what we have at the atrium that is intended to be moved to Prosser. So when, you know, assuming the timing works out, which I think it could, mm -hmm. but it's, I, I think we need to continue to work on that. It's um, definitely worth discussion. There is a, keep in mind though, you would, the uh, books that are boxed, you'd, yes, you'd move them to the location, but you would have to move them from there to the shelves. Uh, so there is a cost there, but yeah, not nearly as much as the right. third location, but right. Or a second move or yeah, correct. Exactly. I mean, there is, Yes, it's sort of a second move, right? <laughs> but it's not a full second move, right? Uh, because they do need to to relocate everything. But yes, it's well, I, 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 well, they need to move those crates around within Prosser mm -hmm. when they're loading shelves and and all that. So correct. They they still might need some help from W. B. Myers at that point. I I don't know that the staff could. No, I'm that. talking about Myers. Yes, I'm, I'm just talking about Myers right. only. Gotcha. You know, they they owe us that. Mm -hmm. so. I, I don't think Allison's going to be picking up no. and moving them around. <laughs> right. So, okay. Uh, questions for Sean? I think Ava's got her hand up. Uh, oh, thank you. Ava? Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I would just like to understand clearly that when we're talking about moving those boxes of materials to the community room, aside from issues of the setup of the community room, 
that community room at that point would have full environmental controls. Oh, sure. Yeah. Air conditioned, heated, et cetera. Yes. Yeah. We gotta yeah. That okay. Because this this is not the kind of thing where um, you you can move boxes of books to like Joe Schmidlap's self store. It has to be um, high level environmental quality controls, or we would have to explain to the taxpayers of this town why the collection was ruined. You know, books have to have certain circumstances. So that that was why I had this concern. Thanks. Yeah, no, it's a, it'll be a finished space. It'll be the nicest home those books ever had. Mm -hmm. so. Great. We'll look forward to that. Thank you. Except for their final location, I would say. Right. right. Next, next door. Next room over. Um, okay. Anything else for Sean? All right. I thank you very much. Um, let's do our uh, invoices, Sharon. Just in the nick of time, I was running out of power. Okay, okay. <laughs> Maybe that's an indication. And since we have uh, Sean on the floor, um, we can probably try to move um, Collier's invoice number 977-237 in the amount of $9,836 for services rendered through August 2024. So moved. For approval by Mr. Ike, seconded by Mr. Berman. Thank you very much. Questions, discussion? All, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any nays? Okay, abstaining. Passes, thank you. Oh, uh, Marsha, your microphone is on there. We've got some noise happening. Thanks. Okay, next we have, this is for um, McMahon, uh, Glenn. Um, Susaya Construction. Invoice number 3853 in the amount of $2,618.20. So moved. So moved. Moved by Mr. Berman, seconded by Mr. Ike. Discussion, questions? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any nays? Anybody abstaining? Motion passes. Thank you. Next. Also, this is another one for McMahon, um, Atom. And this yeah. is invoice number 341 in the amount of $16,880 even. Now this so is for the uh, EV charging stations, the delivery. And as Mr. Berman had pointed out um, several committee meetings ago, the software subscription fee of $820 has been populated under another purchase order under um, our facilities operating budget outside the project. Um, so what's the net amount that we're approving here, Glenn? Sixteen thousand and sixty dollars. So moved. Sixteen oh six oh. I'll second it, but I have a question. All right, moved by Mr. Ike, seconded by Mr. Berman. Uh, go ahead, Bob. Yeah, uh, what about the at the Tom Core software subscription? The one uh, that's part of the uh, that's part of the initial setup fee. Those aren't. <laughs> That's a one-time setup cost. Um, All right. Any other questions, comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Be abstaining. Motion passes. Thank you. Next. Uh, Glenn, you may have to help me out in how we pronounce this one. Boys Verge? Um, uh, sure. This is uh, for Boy Vare Plumbing. This was for the um, plumbing rough-in move in the staff lounge to accommodate the new millwork. And this is invoice number 9292 in the amount of $1,237.50. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ike, seconded by Lois. Second. Oh, Lois okay. Thank you very much. 
Questions, discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any nays? Abstentions? Motion abstaining, excuse me. Motion passes. And another one for McMahon. And this is invoice number one, the amount of $1,700 even. Um, Glenn, if you want to give a little ex explanation. Sure. This is for uh, John Filaramo Masonry Services to remove the east entrance book drop and repoint the exterior masonry. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ike. Seconded by Mr. Berman. Thank you very much. Questions? Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any nays? Anybody abstaining? Motion passes. Thank you very much. And lastly. Okay, next we have Michael Horton. And um, this is now for Prosser. Invoice number 21-241-SIB3 in the amount of $300 for a special inspection. And in the packet was also the detail that um, covers that. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ike. Second. And by Mr. Berman. Questions, discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Abstaining, we have passed that motion. Thank you very much. Okay, so that's it, Sharon, for that. That all right. covers uh, all the invoices. Uh, what about this CNG agreement? Do we have to approve that? No. No? no? That CNG, uh, that CNG was uh, no cost. Uh, that was to uh, get the line run into. Uh, we don't have to approve that? I don't think so. I mean, it's a, it's a, how should I put it? Um, on it's be an it's be, okay. All right. Um, okay. So uh, other items, I know um, our town manager has uh, something he wants to share with us. Al, are you, you're still there, right? Yes. Thank you. Yes, I'm still here. Uh, good evening team. I uh, just want to make everyone aware that, um, uh, Mr. John Coleman uh, facilitated a meeting today with uh, with a number of us uh, here at the town uh, with uh, Connecticut Green Bank, and um, it was a very um, uh, productive discussion. And I, I hope to be in a position to make a decision uh, by tomorrow, if not uh, early next week. When I I see we have a visitor here with uh, with uh, Director Lane. Uh, this this meeting is now official. I see. <laughs> All right, so um, uh, I, I hope to be in a position uh, by this time tomorrow, uh, no later than uh, next week when I get back from a, a ICMA conference in Pittsburgh uh, to lock in a course of action that can secure the required uh, solar uh, for, um, for Prosser and McMahon. So uh, I can stand by for that. Uh, we have a uh, a uh, very uh, good uh, feeling about uh, being able to work with Green Bank, but we want to pursue uh, one of their option first to exhaust all options, but uh, we're moving forward uh, very deliberately. And, uh, and I thank Mr. Coleman for his efforts. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That's good news. Very good news. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. uh, other members of the committee, any other items? Okay. Yeah. Huge. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Go ahead, Mr. Berman. Chair, uh, again, I just want to point out that we get every project has surprises. We've got a couple more. We're going to have some more coming up. I have no doubts. They always do. Uh, when we take a look at what the canopies of McMahon are going to cost, assuming we go forward with both of them, and I think the committee pretty much is in favor of doing that. I'm not sure that the contingency for McMahon and the savings we've had so far is going to cover all the costs of those canopies. So we may have to shift some money from our contingency at Prosser over toward McMahon, which again, we need to continue staying tightly on budget and making sure that uh, we still have enough contingency there the further along in the building we get, both buildings. Because 
we're limited to X dollars period overall. And it's a matter of how we spend that. We have to be very careful on how we spend contingency money because I, I don't know what's gonna crop up. We've had surprises on soil. We've had surprises on a few other things and we need to continue being careful. So I, I just wanna remind everybody. Thank you, Bob. Any other committee members? Clark. Thank you. The, uh, just Sharon and I were talking, the, we didn't get all the pages for the uh, McMahon tracking. We only got two pages. There was additional pages dated 918 or whatever. I just, if, if that could be resent, that's what I'm asking about. I'm sorry. I got all three. You got how many pages? Three. Okay. We only got two. So. Mm. Yeah, Glenn, if you would, just to. Uh, sure, what is the last I, line? I think Sharon part. sent it, but uh, yeah. I know okay. you both have access to it. Yeah, not, not a problem. I can send that over. Thank you. That first thing in the morning. Okay. Any other committee members? All right. Future meetings. Uh, we are into October. How about that? Uh, the second and the sixteenth. Um, oh, I I want to thank Patrick for filling in for me last week. He had to attend no fewer than three meetings <laughs> for this project last. Thought it was an off week. You know, I, I pulled a Bob Ike and I went on a cruise. How about that? <laughs> um, so thank you, Patrick, for that. Um, all right. Lois, you will miss October. Okay. Oh, well, the, right. We've got one, actually one also on the 30th, right? 216, we only list two here, but in the 30th. So um, I will actively be looking at canceling something in October, honestly. I, you know, because uh, Anthony wants to see his family once in a while. <laughs> All right. Um, public comments. Uh, Sharon, we have people from the public that want to talk to us. Uh, we have two people, but unfortunately, they don't want to talk to tonight. Okay. Well, I thank them. I thank them for attending as always. It's important. All right. Uh, with that, uh, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Mr. Ike. Second. Second by Mr. Berman. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. We are adjourned, and I thank everybody for putting up 835. A lot of business to cover. <laughs>